if you see the amount of people that fled Afghanistan the moment Taliban took over, you can see these are people who actually wanted to live in Afghanistan. They didn't just want to leave. If they wanted to leave, they could have left a lot earlier. They left because of the reality of how Taliban treats women, treats children, and treats men. Uh, welcome to uh, PSC Stories. Uh, today I'm welcoming uh, Sofia, and we are going to talk about uh, the current situation in Afghanistan, the social media campaigns, uh, Afghanistan culture, and do not touch my clothes, uh, women, um, and people with uh, uh, Afghanist, uh, Afghan heritage from all over the world uh, protesting uh, the Taliban codes. Uh, so welcome, Sofia, and uh, can you introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, my name is Sofia, um, and I want to introduce myself in this way. My name is Sofia, and um, I am from occupied Afghanistan. Um, it's currently an online campaign where Afghans are Um, calling and hashtagging free Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, I live in Norway. Uh, my family fled to Norway when I was seven years old. Uh, so in like 2003. Uh, okay. And uh, could you like uh, a bit more explaining like since uh, the, uh, the Taliban says the control in Afghanistan Uh, how it doesn't impact uh, the daily lives of people in general and so of women? Uh, well, since the day uh, the Taliban took control over the entire country, uh, which is a little over a month ago, um, the country is now currently in a huge economic and humanitarian crisis. Uh, people who had government jobs, uh, like, like teachers, um, They can't go back to their jobs, which also means they can't get paid. Um, our banks are opened, uh, but the money um, the, mo the money is uh, frozen, so people can't really take out it, cash out any money. Uh, so currently, people don't have jobs, they don't have money, um, and they're in need of, um, of humanitarian aid. Um, also, when it comes to women, Uh, what happened is uh, there's still currently uh, protests going on in major cities in Afghanistan and it has been uh, for the past month. Uh, women are protesting for their rights uh, to get back to work, for their rights to education. Um, and not long ago, the Taliban imposed uh, the new Islamic uh, dress code that's supposed to cover you from head to toe, as well as segregate universities. So. If women or men wants to attend university classes, they're segregated uh, and women have to be covered covered up. Uh, some of the pictures I saw, like the women, you can even see their eyes. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing it's a, it's a type of niqab, but they also have like a veil on top of again, so you can't mm -hmm. even see their eyes. All of this um, uh, is the reason why all most Afghan women are on the streets right now. Uh, raising their voices um, for their civil and social uh, and human rights, uh, basically. At the same time, it's important to mention that um, uh, they don't have their access to, to the internet is limited. Um, they're not allowed to protest. So while these protests are going on, they're being met by, by violence. Um, there has been a lot of shootings at protesters. Uh, but these are the things that we don't get to see on media uh, due to our journalists not having the freedom of press. Um, a lot of our journalists are being beaten, uh, they're being met by violence. Uh, so whatever is currently happening in Afghanistan is not being reported as no. should. Okay, I see. So that's why then, then the social media campaigns are an alternative to protest against the Taliban? Yes, exactly. So the campaign Do Not Touch My Clothes uh, was started by Dr. Uh, Bahar Jalali, um, where she posted um, her picture and her Afghan traditional clothing, um, hashtagging Do Not Touch My Clothes, which was the start of the campaign against the dress code that was imposed on Afghan women. Um, I joined the campaign myself um, with my Afghan traditional clothing. Um, and it was for me, it was a means of 
of showing how colorful and vibrant our culture is and how being covered from top to toe in black is not a part of my culture. It's not a part of my identity. Um, and uh, and to show that women should have the choice themselves to wear whatever they want to be wearing. Um, if we look back um, even a hundred or 50 years ago, you won't see any Afghan woman dressed in that manner. Um, we've always had the culture of wearing um, large scarves around us and covering like the hair, um, but but not in the manner of covering your entire face and all black. Um, I was. I'm also going to mention because um, I know there's. Uh, I heard there's other. Um, there are people commenting that. Um, Afghan people do not wear the traditional clothing all the time at all times. These are the traditional clothing you wear at um, weddings and parties. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to I want to add there that they're actually Afghan people, Afghan women who are coochies, are nomadic um, women, and on the outskirts of Afghanistan, a lot of these women actually still wear uh, the traditional clothing. Maybe not with as much. Um, color or detailed handwork but they still wear the traditional clothing uh, this is just a way to show that even in the outskirts of the cities you don't see women being covered up from top to toe i see and uh, regarding the social media campaigns uh, are you not afraid that it's turning into a more performative and it's not really uh, helping because for example i've seen that for other social media campaigns I uh, took part in. So it it is it is a uh, it is a thing to be to be to be scared of or to worry about. Uh, but currently, I think what's going on in Afghanistan is is so harsh of a reality to be living in that people are taking any tool they have to bring awareness. Uh, we feel like when we're creating these campaigns, I I feel like a lot of Afghans feel like they're they've just been left, and everyone has just turned a blind eye to them. Uh, so Afghan people are using any tool they have to bring awareness to show people of what's going on, um, and I don't think a lot of us think about of it being as performative. Um, I think it's just a scary thought of. Of sitting there and feeling like you cannot, you can't do anything, and the world is just watching in silent. What I wanted to say is with the with the campaign, uh, do not touch my clothes. Um, I I loved it. I, I loved that the campaign was was trending on on Twitter, um, and it gained a lot of uh, exposure and it got exposure on on news networks. Um, uh, however, I still wanna say that I don't want this campaign uh, with pretty dresses to take away of the reality that's actually happening in Afghanistan right now. Um, I also want to ask uh, a question to to the Taliban women, or I don't know how to refer to these women, who are covered from top to toe and they're protesting in Kabul and other cities in Afghanistan. Uh, and they're saying, we are tired of democracy, we are tired of freedom, or we do not want freedom. Um, I want to ask them, why weren't they covered up like that? And why weren't they demonstrating and protesting against democracy and freedom for the past 20 years that we did have freedom and democracy? Mm. Even if it was partially, why all of a sudden are they here now? I mean, I understand they're they're being protected, like while other majority of Afghan women who are facing losing their rights and facing not being able to get an education and not getting back to their jobs, they are protesting. Their protests are not being covered. Uh, they are being met by violence. While these women, on the other hand, are given protection by the Taliban because they're prote- protesting against democracy and freedom. So my question to these women are, why weren't any of these women protesting democracy and freedom for the past 20 years? Mm-hmm. What, what's happening? Why now? Why, why were they enjoying the freedom for the past 20 years? And then suddenly they're here now and they don't want it. Like, I, I want to know why they suddenly decide 
now to protest freedom and democracy that the Taliban has taken over the country? Why weren't they using their freedom of speech and democracy or partially democracy in Afghanistan to protest mm -hmm. uh, for the past 20 years? So what are the risks if, for example, women uh, in Afghanistan go against this dress code? I mean, right now, the only uh, small pieces that we get to hear uh, from women on the ground in Afghanistan, they're talking about um, being met by violence um, on TV. We see the Taliban spokesperson um, telling women to get, come back to work. They have nothing against women and women are allowed to be at work. Like journalists kind of come back to to the TV stations and host their programs. Um, I was watching a news with, the, if I'm not wrong, it was with BBC and this journalist says um, the Taliban keeps saying on TV they can come back to work. And then the moment they actually go to work, they are being met with um, with soldiers, with like Taliban soldiers um, yeah. with weapons, uh, meeting them with violence and actually beating them and turning them away. Uh, so it just shows how it's a facade for the Taliban to to, to be saying um, positive things on TV, like saying they, they don't want to, uh, they're not trying to remove women from society. But as uh, as we see and as we hear from people on ground, that's not the reality. Regarding like the traditional dress, uh, what's the name of the traditional dress? And is it uh, is there like one sort of traditional dress or several types of uh, traditional dress? Um, you know, the beauty of Afghanistan is its diversity. Um, we're a country with um, different ethnicities. Uh, yeah merged together we speak different languages um i grew up calling the traditional clothing for gand uh, mm -hmm. but i'm pretty sure people actually have maybe other terms for it um mm -hmm. and no there is not one specific dress um i i know people different ethnicities have their own versions but it's still referred to as our traditional clothing and i know people in north have a certain type of um a very a different version of the of the traditional clothing in comparison to people in south or in comparison to people in east or west um yeah. so there are different types of it which for me makes the beauty of of how diverse and beautiful afghanistan really is and uh yes i have to admit that this is the first time i'm seeing it because uh growing up in the western europe i used to see when they represent like afghan women most of the time it was like really long at scarves and completely fully covered and uh, I was wondering like how how can we like be better in the in the in the in the representation and the narratives uh, regarding Afghanistan in general and Afghan women because I've seen a lot of white white uh, protectism paternalism white feminism because I grew up in France and it was always like, yeah, we have to save Afghan women. They are fully covered. So submitted to uh, Islam, or whatever they think, whatever views. So I was wondering like how could be better? Well, um, I believe uh, like other uh, women of color, I don't think Afghan women needs uh, white feminism to save them from anything. Um, I see videos and I see pictures while being in Afghanistan of fierce and brave Afghan women um, staying eye to eye with with the Taliban, with terrorists uh, fighting for their for their rights. Um, I don't believe uh, I would see any of that uh, here. So I I'm so pr I I see the pride. I'm so proud of of the strength that Afghan women have. Um, for still being alone, they, they've been left alone. Um, the West had a hand in stealing their rights away from them, and they're still on the ground, they're still fighting for their rights. As if what we can do from the West is to amplify their voices. Uh, they're currently, like I said, they're currently in a situation where their protests are not being covered by media. They need coverage. Uh, we need to see more of what's actually happening on the ground in Afghanistan. A lot of it is not being covered, uh, which for a lot of people equals to nothing's happening. A lot of people yeah. think that the war is over and yeah. things are back to normal, but, but it's not. The war is still going on. Uh, women still don't have 
rights. Um, children are still being killed. Uh, there's still mass killings going on in Kandahar and Daikundi and Panjshir. Um, and none of this is being covered by the media. Do you know like any organization or other alternatives like how to help uh, Afghanistan, uh, people in Afghanistan? I'm currently seeing um, the UN um, and Amnesty are helping with aid that goes into Afghanistan through Pakistan. Uh, and I was watching this um, this interview with uh, with this with this Afghan woman where she points out how 40% of the aid goes to cover um, salaries for the for the workers, and then there's money that goes to cover NGO expenses, and then the only thing Afghan families get is maybe a bag of flour or. A a carton of milk or a bag of rice. And by with that, we get to sit in our comfort chairs in, in the West and say like, okay, we did our part. We helped them with a bag of flour. Um, so I believe uh, the best way to, to help refugees and to help Afghanistan right now is stop producing the wars, stop supporting wars that produce them. And we could have, the situation in Afghanistan could have, could have been managed completely differently. Afghan people were demonstrating all over the world for, for their voices to be heard and no one heard us. Uh, so now that the Taliban has taken over and there are being mass killings happening uh, right now, the amnesty and the UN wants to talk about how to Uh, send humanitarian aid to Afghanistan and that too through Pakistan, um, a country the people of Afghanistan not at all trusts. Then regarding like the the question you were asking uh, before uh, for uh, women supporting Taliban, do you know the reason why some women would prefer to support the Taliban? I really don't. I would like to know, mm -hmm. but I really don't. Um, especially if they are Afghan women. Um, I don't know if they are Afghan women and I don't know if they are women at all. <laughs> um, but if they are Afghan women, I would like to know why. Because as far as I know, my mom lived during the Taliban rule. We did, but I was a child. And I, I remember my mom telling us how she was being threatened every single day when they were knocking our door looking for my dad. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, my dad was a, was a general in the army working for the communist regime. So when the oh. Taliban took over the country in, in 96, uh, they were actually um, out to, to kill every single person who worked for the government, just like they're doing this time, like police officers. Oh. Um, they were killing even... Uh, um, Uh, people who were working um, like small government jobs that mm -hmm. had really nothing to do they had really nothing to do with what was going on in the government inside the government right they're they're killing those people so it's the rampage is going on it's still the same thing it's still the same Taliban and I will never ever accept and I will never believe that these people have changed These are the same terrorists who who bombed a maternity ward. That's only that's not even a year ago. They they bombed Ka Kabul University and killed 40 students. Uh, they bombed Dash Devachi All Girls High School and killed 86 young girls. Uh, so if they're going to come within a couple of months and tell me they've changed, I don't believe that. If they had, how have they changed in one month? They have been bombing schools and mosques and universities and open roads and TV stations for the past 20 years, killing children and women. Mm -hmm. How have, how can we believe and trust them and saying they have changed? I mean, their, um, their leaders come on TV and talk about women as if they're some objects. They yeah. compare women to water, cut up watermelons. Um, so these are, I, I, these are not the people we want as leaders in Afghanistan.
And I maybe it's easier for me to say this while being in Norway, but as an Afghan, I will never accept um, an international terrorist group to be ruling a country. Uh, imagine if they came to to Germany or to Norway, would we mm-hmm. allow them to take over our gom- government and govern us? And yeah, I wanted to come back so of what you say because uh, when I see uh, Twitter. On Twitter in general, uh, some people criticize the fact that, yes, yeah, some, for example, Afghan women are in the West and they are very comfortable and sitting and on their chair, they have all what they have, the freedom and so on. And then some people say then, yes, then if you want really to fight for Afghan women and for Afghanistan, why you don't go back to, uh, uh, to Afghanistan? So what do you think about this comment? And... Uh, And yeah, yeah, what do you think about it? I I have actually received a lot of those messages myself. Um mm. and I have the same I have the same message to Taliban supporters who um live in democracy and freedom in the West and enjoys these freedoms. Um I want to know why they are living in the West. This is literally a dream come true for them. If they were supporting the Taliban to take over our country, this is a dr- dream come true for you. Like, why aren't you, why don't you move back to Afghanistan and actually live your dream come true? Instead of instead of harassing people who are protesting, who are trying to use their voices and platforms to bring awareness to what's happening in Afghanistan and to Afghan women right now, Mm-hmm. they can actually go back to Afghanistan. We don't want to live under Taliban rule. That's why we're still here. That's why we fled our country in the first place. Uh, so for them to be to be sending messages like that to women who actually works hard to amplify the voices of Afghan women on the ground in Afghanistan, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's amusing to me. Uh, But at the same time, I also want to tell myself that I can't take uh, I can't take the the focus away from what's happening in Afghanistan. If I want to protest and if I want to join any campaigns, that has to be to amplify the voices of Afghan women in Afghanistan. I see. And uh, is there anything else you would like to to say? I wanted to say that um, a lot of Afghan people are protesting abroad. And they're being met um, with um, harsh comments um, by Taliban supporters on on Twitter, on Facebook, or on Instagram, um, denying them the right to actually protest and denying them the right to to be Afghan. Um, if it was, if I, if my family weren't forced to flee Afghanistan, if these monsters. Um, weren't forcing a lot of Afghan families to flee. I don't think any of them would actually leave their country. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was recently discussing this topic. Um, if you see the amount of people that fled Afghanistan the moment Taliban took over, you can see these are people who actually wanted to live in Afghanistan. They didn't just want to leave. If they wanted to leave, they could have left a lot earlier. They left because of the reality of how Taliban treats women, treats children, and treats men. They already know what what comes. History is repeating itself. Um, only this time, we're actually being left alone by the West. They literally gave us and gave our country and handed it over to the same terrorists they were fighting for the past 20 years. Mm-hmm.